Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be doing just kind of some routine maintenance on the Maverick here. I guess you could say it's routine maintenance, but also not. So basically my rear U joints went bad here about a, two years ago, I think it was, and it kind of tore up the drive shaft a little bit. I was able to take a Dremel tool and kind of round back out the holes where the U joint goes into. And I was able to make it work for a couple of years anyway, but now it's starting to make clunky noises again and I'm not going to try to mess with it anymore. I just went ahead and bought a new prop shaft and I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So this might seem straightforward to a lot of people. I had kind of forgotten how I even did it the last time. So I was looking for videos to kind of see how to take it apart and everything. And nobody has any. There's lots for the X3s and for even front drive shafts on these first edition Mavericks. But nothing for the rear drive shaft. So I figured while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and film a video and hopefully help some people out. So we're gonna go ahead and get to it. So when it comes to picking a new drive shaft, obviously you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and just replace your U joints. In my instance, like I was saying, my U joints or my drive shaft itself, and it's called a prop shaft on these, is actually kind of torn up. So I went ahead and got a new one. You can get one from a lot of different stores. You can get aftermarket ones that are cheap, 120 bucks, or I think about 190 bucks is what I saw the cheapest one being. I ended up going with an OEM one from the Can-Am parts guy. It was, I think around $350. To me, that's worth it to go ahead and get an OEM quality one. This machine has almost 4,000 miles on it now, and the OEM one has held up just fine. So decided to go ahead and go with that. Also, his drive shafts do come, they're the updated version, so you don't need a new wear ring. This is an updated drive shaft, so when you swap this in, you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, this is exactly what they came with from the factory. Super heavy duty, should last, like I said, hopefully another 4,000 miles. So to get started with this whole process, you kind of got to get yourself some access to the drive shaft. And for those of you that don't know, your motor's up in here, you got your transmission and your drive shaft hooks in right kind of back in there to the side of the seat. So you got to take your seat out, got to take these side panels out, and that'll give you access to the front of the drive shaft. And that, I believe, is held on by like a 13 millimeter bolt that comes into the front of the yoke and kind of bolts to the transmission output shaft. And then here in the back, From what I remember last time, I had to unbolt kind of the rear diff so that way it could slide back a little bit and then the whole drive shaft was able to just drop right out. So to get the interior apart, it's really pretty simple. You're going to need an 8mm Allen key to take out this bolt here that kind of holds the seat in. And then you're going to need some sort of trim tool for all the little plastic tabs that hold in all these interior trim pieces or else you can use just a screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and probably end up using both. but. That's the main tools you're gonna need. Go ahead and get this thing out of here. All right guys, now that I've got all these plastics out of here, you can kind of see what we're trying to get at. So here's basically your motor, and then you got your transmission and everything. And then down there you can see the drive shaft. So it's almost, I don't even, you might be able to get to it without taking this plastic out that covers your gas tank. I think it would be really hard to kind of reach in there and angle your hand back though. So I went ahead and popped it out, but I can't really show it on the camera, it's just no way to really fit it back in there, but you might be able to see that bolt right there that basically holds that drive shaft into the back of your transmission. So that's what we're going for. I believe it's a 13 millimeter bolt, and it's a pretty short one, so it comes out fairly easy. I can't remember if I was able to use a ratcheting wrench. Hopefully I can. That'll make it go a lot easier, but basically that's what we're going to do now. Pop that out, and then... I'll work my way back here and then undo the diff and hopefully get this thing out here in the next few minutes. So it was a 13 millimeter bolt. As you can see, it's not a very long one at all. Mine was actually loose in there and I was able to back it off by hand, which is not good at all. So when you take that out, make sure you get this washer too. The washer does is not like captive on the bolt. It can fall off. So you want to make sure that you get that too, because that is a critical part for actually holding the drive shaft to your transmission. So anyway, that came out super easy. Should not have been loose, but I mean, it made it easy for taking out. Now we'll move back to the rear. All right, so at the top of the diff, you can see a bolt that goes through here. That is a 15 millimeter. 
on both sides. I already took the nut off, but it's basically got a like a flared end there, almost like a washer, but so that has to come out there pretty easy. Then here toward the back, you've got another one. And that one is actually a 17 millimeter on that side. And then the bolt, or then the nut end is an 18 millimeter. And I don't know if I can get the camera back there, but that's something you guys are gonna have to probably just uh, look out for yourself. But if you can see it right there, and then right back here. So you got three bolts total holding that diff in. And they just gotta be slid out enough so that you can just pull the diff back enough to drop that drive shaft out. All right, so there's our three bolts. There was actually two 15 millimeters. I know I said there was two 17s, but two 15 millimeters. And then this single 17 millimeter was the one here in the back that goes through this wider part of the diff. And then you had the two 15 millimeter nuts and an 18 millimeter nut. So comes off super easy. Now you can see here, there's plenty of slack in there. So I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back off camera and then pull the drive shaft out. And this whole process with me recording has really only taken probably half an hour. So it's actually a pretty simple process, guys. So I thought there was just the one 13 millimeter bolt that held the drive shaft in at the front on the transmission side, but turns out I had forgotten and there is actually one that holds it to the diff as well. So I was able to take a 13 millimeter gear wrench and as you guys can see, it's kind of got the kind of bent on the end. So that was able to work in there into that U-joint and I'm able to get it loose with that. So that will have to come out, otherwise you're gonna be looking stupid like me and thinking that you got everything loose and then wondering why your drive shaft doesn't come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out and then the drive shaft should come out. All right guys, after a bit of wiggling, I did get the drive shaft out. And just to give you an idea of how bad this thing is, this was at the rear. That was not gonna last much longer at all. You can see in here, that cup is absolutely split apart, completely destroyed. This is why I didn't wanna take that thing on a ride this weekend because it was making noise and I knew it was on its way out. But yeah, that is horrible, guys. This front one has a little play, but at least it's not too bad. So, good thing we're changing that. Okay, guys, so getting the drive, the new drive shaft in or whatever you happen to be doing if you're just rebuilding, putting in new U-joints, but I put in the rear first, didn't bolt it or anything, and then slipped on the front and got, went ahead and just loosely threaded the bolts in. The front one is pretty easy to get the bolt in. This back one is horrible. I didn't, I, I started getting flashbacks the last time I did this and quickly remembered why I hated this so much. So basically what I found, the best way to get that rear bolt started, because I could not do it with one hand coming in here from the side, like I got it out. So I ended up sticking one arm through here, one arm through here, and basically hugging the backside of this differential and I was able to use my pointer finger on each hand to kind of stick into that yoke and thread that bolt in. It's incredibly, uh, just a horrible process and I think it's a completely stupid design, but whatever. If anybody else has done this and has a better idea of how to do it, please let us know because I'm sure myself and everybody in the comments could, or anybody that's watching this video could greatly benefit from that, so. Aside from that, now all I gotta do is tighten up the two 13 millimeter bolts and then put my three bolts in back in the diff and then just put in the interior pieces and we're basically good to go. I cannot believe how bad that, diff, that drive shaft was. I mean, that like you guys could see, that entire cup was completely blown out and it's actually way worse than I was even expecting it to be. So I'm really glad I didn't take it on any more rides because more than likely it would have been towing the thing back home, so. We'll go ahead and get this wrapped up, guys, and we'll be ready to hit the trail. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully, it helps some of you out with figuring out how to change the rear prop shaft in your first-gen Mavericks. This won't cover any of the X3s, but it should cover, I believe, pretty much every single first-gen Maverick, the XMRs, and even probably the turbo models, I would think.
If there's anything I missed or any tips that any of you guys have that you'd like to share with other people that may be reading the comments that are watching this video, feel free to drop them down below. If this helped you guys out, please give it a like. That'll really help the algorithm get my videos getting pushed out more and help me with continuing to create videos. So thanks guys and we'll catch you in the next one.